All right, guys, so now we're going to be making this render right here, this basically animation right here. Uh, so this is a video and this thing right here, this MacBook right here is um, basically a 3D model, which has been uh, composited on top of this video. So we're going to be doing the motion tracking and then we're going to be adding this uh, object and then we're going to be lighting this and everything. Uh, and finally, we're going to be rendering this as a PNG sequence and then we're going to be bringing it on top of this um, footage. And finally, we are going to be um, doing some color grading and just matching the colors and stuff like that. So it's going to be pretty fun. And yeah, let's begin with that. All right. So let me just. All right, perfect. So I'm just going to be opening up Blender right here. And usually we create a general project, but this time we're going to be doing a VFX project. Um, so this is going to be opening this, um, this viewport right here. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is that firstly, we have to import our um, footage. So, so make sure that you know the frame rate of your footage, because that is really important because we're going to have to set that inside of Blender. Uh, so just, let me just browse over to where I saved my video. All right. So here I have that video. If I just play it, you're going to see that it's that video. Uh, and I'm just going to right click this. I'm going to go to properties. And here you can see, if I just go to details, you're going to see the frame rate of this is 30.00 frames per second. Now, this is important. Just make sure to know your frame rate. Um, and yeah, you don't really, you don't really need to change it or convert it into um, an image sequence. I've seen a lot of people do that, but I don't think that's really necessary. Uh, so we just have to drag and drop this into Blender like that. And perfect. So you can see it plays just well. And I'm just going to be clicking the set scene frames right here, which is going to adjust our um, timeline according to the time of this video. And I'm just going to press prefetch so that it just loads all the loads, the whole video into RAM so that we don't really have to um, wait for it to load. Right. So that's perfect. And now we can just go ahead and start with um, basically the tracking. So for the tracking, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be pressing this detect features right here, which is going to be basically detecting all the points um, which can be tracked. Uh, so it's going to track those um, points. And so now once I have all those points selected, make sure yeah, that you have a lot of these points. Uh, if, for example, if you don't have that many, then you can simply uh, just press detect features and then you can just go down to this menu and you can basically reduce the margin to something like eight. That's going to maybe add some points and then you can reduce the threshold as well. So for example, 0 0.01, that should be fine. And the distance as well, you can just make it 80 or something like that. Uh, so basically the lower the values of these are, uh, the more points you're going to get in your scene. And so to start off, I think these uh, this many points are pretty good. Um, however, we can obviously add more later on. So I'm just going to be selecting one of them. I'm going to press A to select all of them. And I'm going to press Control T on my keyboard to basically go ahead and track them. So now you're going to see that um, we have a decent, pretty, a pretty decent track right here. Um, and the way I know that is because we have a pretty good um, line, which uh, is green. We have a pretty good, basically, um, uh, yeah, basically we have a lot of points which are green and which are pretty similar to each other. Uh, however, we do have a few problems. So for example, this one right here, uh, the red ones are not useful for us. This one right here is going away from uh, the whole group. So I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to be um, maybe selecting this one. So everything, every uh, basically curve which goes against the main group is not good for us. I'm just going to delete those, those as well. And this one, of course. The rest seem to be fine. This one is not. This one isn't, of course. Maybe this one. Now, if you have a lot of these, then you might have to spend some time um, with that. However, there shouldn't be there shouldn't be that many. I mean, delete that as well. I think we're good. Should I, I don't think I should have deleted that. Yeah, never mind. I'm gonna delete that. Um, apart from that, I think we are looking pretty good. Yeah. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and firstly um just what do you call it yeah let's let's just solve this camera and then we'll see what kind of error we get and then we're going to be tweaking it and making changes later on if need be um right so i'm just going to go to frame number one and right now what i'm going to do is that i'm simply going to go to uh, tracking settings and i'm just going to press this button right here i'm going to set it to blurry footage uh, because that just seems to be working fine for this uh scene you can set it to others if you want and you can just uh, try solving the camera and then just see which um uh, wh which option gives you the least solve error. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be the thing. You have to get your solve error to be the lowest. Um, and so, yeah, so I think all these settings seem to be good. Now, let me just go ahead and press 
solve camera motion and then let's see what kind of error we get so we get an error of 0 0.68 pixels which is pretty good i mean if uh, if you get an error below one then that's pretty good uh, so i don't think we really need to do that much um tweaking however if you do get an error for example then you just have to add more points and then you have to keep tracking it again and again until you get a good solver uh, and for example if you just go ahead and let's say many of your points disappear then what you have to do is you have to uh, go to that point just press detect features and then you can just track it later on uh, and i just pressed Control z uh, because i don't really need more points because i have enough and yeah so if your if your camera has a lot of motion then you are going to need a lot of points and then you are going to add have to add a lot of points later on as well uh because obviously uh, otherwise it's not going to look that good right so i think we are good to go with the tracking part it is looking pretty decent now we can move on to uh the next step is going to be adding uh the laptop and everything so for that first let me just set this as background so that we have it in our viewport then i'm going to set up the tracking scene as well now what this is going to do is that this is basically going to sort of create uh the whole scene for us like that and now you're going to see that if i just get rid of this cube you have you're going to see that i have this plane which i can rotate and adjust according to what i want and i think so make sure your perspective seems nice seems correct so something like that seems to be correct i'm moving it by pressing shift z which means that i am basically moving it in all axes except for the z axis so you're going to see it looks sort of uh, it sort of looks as if it is um on this table the perspective is fine now if i just get out of my camera you're going to see that uh, we have a lot of these points and so basically you want your scene uh, you want your plane to be um in line with these points what do i mean by that let me just show you an example um so why am i not seeing this camera option right here so i'm just going to go to this option right here and i'm going to turn this navigate on and so now we have this camera option right now you're going to see that um the points which we have in our scene are currently um right here right so i'm just going to go to my camera and you're going to see that most of my points are actually on top of this keyboard which means that if our plane is in line with the keyboard uh, then that should be pretty fine for us that should be pretty good for us uh, and right now you're going to see that the perspective is not actually matching that much so we're going to have to fix that um so right now you see that these points the general direction of these so these points isn't really straight it's a little curved so let's um make our plane adjust to that and then it's going to look pretty then it's going to look a lot better um so let me just set this to local because i wanted to rotate according to its own axis i think something like that should be good a little bit like that gz let me move it down so that it's sort of in line with those plane uh, with those points and then maybe something like that that seems to be a lot better and yeah you're going to see now the perspective is matching up pretty well and it genuinely looks as if it is oops as if this is sitting on top of this um table 